when I graduated from the Chiropractic Institute of New York yeah. in 1957, Massachusetts was not a licensed chiropractic state. Chiropractors were getting arrested for practice of wow. medicine without a license. We had three children. We were expecting our fourth. And I could not take a chance and go to jail and right, leave my wife right. stranded with four children. So we opted to do the next best thing, is get as close to Lowell, Massachusetts as I could. So we looked into Pelham, New Hampshire, found a real nice location, and we opted to move there, start my practice, with the thought in mind, someday when Massachusetts gets licensed, move back to Lowell. Mm -hmm. That day came in 1966. I'm giving you a little bit of a history lesson right, here right, too. Right, 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 exactly. And in 1966, when Lowell, when Massachusetts became licensed, Governor Volpe was the governor that year. We had our roots pretty well set in Pelham, New Hampshire. Yeah. I checked with my patients, I did a little survey, and they said, we find it easier parking in your parking lot <laughs> in Pelham, New Hampshire than trying to park somewhere in Lowell. Yeah, yeah. So we opted to stay there. The children had their friendships. We had right. our school relationships. And we decided to just enlarge and stay in Pelham. Yeah. And at that time, New Hampshire had one of the poorest chiropractic laws in the country. Hmm. And I made up my mind that I was going to do whatever possible to make New Hampshire a chiropractic accredited state, meaning that it would be it would conform with the United States Department of Education. For sure. And yeah. students could not come to New Hampshire and practice unless they graduated from an accredited school. At that time, chiropractors didn't have to have a college degree to get into chiropractic colleges as it is today. Yeah. You cannot get in an accredited chiropractic college today without two years of professional training, and most of them require a bachelor's degree. And even further than that, you see a lot of professional people switching professions, dentists yeah. and veterinarians switching into chiropractic because it's such a, a popular field. In, just about everybody goes to chiropractors today. Right. First thing I had to do was try to get a governor in New Hampshire right. that would be in favor of accreditation. That was the first most step. vital step. But to get to the governor, I had to have somebody in the House of Representatives that could give us the information. When I say us, I was the president of the New Hampshire Chiropractic Political Action Committee. Mm -hmm. So I was the honcho that whenever politicians come in town, they were coming to see Titus Plumeritis. Not the chiropractor, but the political action chairman. Right, right. Claire, my wife, who was a dedicated mother, and she spent all her premier years taking care of the children, raising the children. So when they all became old enough to leave the household and go spread their wings and go to college, she decided that she wanted to do something else. Yeah. And she said, how about if I take that role and become a legislator? I said, Claire, if you'd like to do that, I'll be a campaign manager. Okay, good. <laughs> and I gave her the best campaign you could possibly give a representative. In 1978, we had the first Democratic picnic in Pelham. Yeah. Well, we had the two U.S. senators there, the two <laughs> U.S. representatives there, and we had the two candidates running for governor, Democratic candidates running for governor, and one of them was from Salem, New Hampshire, okay. named Dell Downing, okay. a very good friend of mine. However, in the previous two times that we tried to bring legislation before the state house accreditation legislation he voted against it right. Dell and now this other candidate was a nobody from Littleton he's a car dealer mm -hmm. Hugh Gallon oh, yeah. he came over to me and he said Titus he wanted to look me straight in the eye so I had to get up two steps because he was six foot two <laughs> He looked me right in the eye and he said, Titus, I want you to know 
if you don't support me and I get elected, I will support a, accreditation because I'm in favor of it. Okay. He said, but if you support me and I get elected, I'll hand carry that sucker through the Senate for you. Mm. We never heard that kind of a commitment before. So we won the primary. Now we're going for the election. And that's when I was talking about driving all over the state. We went to the governor's office the day, the week before the election, with 10,000 envelopes all stamped, and they were addressed by the 100 chiropractors. I mm. had each one of those 100 chiropractors to address an envelope longhand, put a stamp on it, and give it to me open with just a one paragraph note inside yeah. to their favorite patients. Dear Larry, please vote for Hugh Gallon, a supporter of accreditation. Mm -hmm. And then we'd have Hugh Gallon put one of his flyers in there, and he mailed those 10,000 envelopes a week before the election. The night of the election, I had my whole team yeah. in my home ready to celebrate the big victory. One hour after the polls closed, <laughs> they announced, all the three, ABC, NBC, CBS, they announced that Governor Meldrum Thompson has been reelected. Uh -huh. I was literally in a state of shock. I couldn't think of anything else I could possibly do. We turned the television off and we were sitting there with my 10 or 12 campaign workers literally talking to one another and trying to figure out what went wrong. All of a sudden, I get a phone call from uh, Walter Dunphy. Now, Walter Dunphy was a, the, chain, the hotel chain magnate. Right, right. He owned the Wayfair in Manchester, and that was our headquarters for Hugh Gallon because I was also on the finance committee. Uh -huh. He said, Titus, put your crew on that bus and come on up. They just declared Gallon the winner. We put the guys in the bus. We drove up there, and the parking lot was packed. But the state troopers were waiting for me. There was a, they, it was like the seas opening up. Oh, right. They drove me right up to the oh, front excellent, entrance. Excellent. And I get inside there, and Walter Dunphy gave me a great big hug, and he said, Titus, you did it. Oh, it was unbelievable, the welcome we had. And in the book, there's a great picture of Hugh Gallon and my crew all wearing the gallon hats. Okay, great. great it was great. unbelievable. Great. It was so, so rewarding.